Alright, hello, I'm Joy Colley. Today we're going to be looking at the phases of mitosis, cellular division. Mitosis is a process where cells are trying to replicate or copy themselves. Original parent cell will ultimately become two daughter cells. The original cell is diploid in terms of genetic material, that's 2N chromosome number, full complement. The daughter cells will have the same identical amount of DNA. They will also be 2N diploid, full complement of DNA. All right, when we talk about mitosis, we know this is a continuation of the cell cycle. The cell cycle begins with interphase. The cell preps in order to get ready for the process of mitosis. The cell is going to get bigger. It's going to copy the DNA. Ultimately, it's also going to copy the organelles. This occurs in a series of steps, G1, S, G2. Those are once again associated with interphase. Interphase is the preparation for cell division, the preparation steps for mitosis. It's not considered part of mitosis. So the first official step of mitosis is what we call prophase. A couple things are happening in prophase. We look at a cell, and this is a model in prophase, and we see not much is happening to the cell at this point. It still looks sort of like a normal shaped cell. We do start to recognize the nucleus is breaking apart, so the nuclear envelope is beginning to dissolve. The chromatin is becoming chromosomes. It's condensing, packaging around the histones so that it will be able to move the DNA during the process. We're not going to worry about early and late when it comes to the phases. We're just going to look at the major players, so this is prophase. Once the nucleus breaks up in its entirety, the chromosomes will be released into the cell. The chromosomes are going to need some way to move around the cell, so we're going to create the spindle fibers. The spindle fibers are microtubules, and they're going to stretch from one pole, one end of the cell, to the other pole, the other end of the cell. The spindle fibers were formed during prophase, and the chromosomes will hook on. They find the spindle fibers and they hook on via the kinetochore during prophase. As soon as they've hooked on to the spindle fibers, prophase is over. Here's a cell where the spindle fibers have been drawn from pole to pole. They're the red wires, and we see that ultimately prophase is followed by metaphase. And in metaphase, the chromosomes that hooked on via the kinetochore in prophase use the spindle fibers as guide ropes and they're going to move whichever direction they need to so that all of the chromosomes, all the pieces of DNA, line up at the cellular equator. Once they've lined up at the cellular equator, this denotes that metaphase is over. Once metaphase is over, anaphase begins. We still see the presence of the spindle fibers. The individual chromatids, which have been attached at the centromere, will break apart. The centromere breaks apart. The individual pieces of DNA, now these are sister chromatids. They're identical copies that were formed during interphase. One of each copy goes to one pole, migrates using the guide ropes to one pole of the cell. The other end, the other sister chromatid, the other partner, is going to migrate to the opposite pole. While this is happening, the overall shape of the cell is beginning to change. The cleavage furrow, the indentation, which indicates the beginning portion of cytokinesis, will develop. Once the chromatids have migrated all the way to the cellular poles, anaphase is over. Once anaphase is over, anaphase is followed by telophase. Telophase is when the chromatids have accumulated at both poles and we start to rebuild a nucleus, a nuclear envelope around the DNA in what will ultimately become one daughter cell. We begin to rebuild the nucleus on the other side, the other pole, which will ultimately become the second of the daughter cells. And then the cleavage furrow, which began in anaphase, deepens, this indentation deepens, indicate that the cell is continuing to physically split. Once these two sides meet each other and the cell physically divides, we refer to that as cytokinesis. Cytokinesis ultimately is the end of mitosis in animals. Plants, however, have one additional thing they need to do. They need to lay, lay down the cell plate um, of cellulose, which ultimately becomes the cell wall, physically dividing the two resulting diploid daughter cells. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, you can also pronounce it telophase, those are the four main steps in the process of cell division, cell replication, mitosis. Okay, 
Let's look at a second set of models associated my, with mitosis, just a different way of representing the same four phases that we've indicated. This is prophase. We see the nucleus is still intact, but it's beginning to dissipate. The spindle fibers are forming in the cell. The chromosomes ultimately, once they're released from the nucleus, will hook onto the spindle fibers. Once they've hooked onto the spindle fibers, prophase is over. Prophase is followed by metaphase, where the spindle fibers are nice and intact. All of the chromosomes will use the guide ropes to align at the cellular equator. So when the chromosomes are lined up, we are in metaphase. Ultimately, metaphase is followed by anaphase. The identical sister chromatids have separated at the centromere. Each of the sister chromatids is migrating to one side, one pole of the cell or the other. The cleavage furrow or the indentation that begins the physical process of cell division has started to develop during anaphase. And we finish the process of mitosis with telophase. In telophase, the spindle fibers are going to dissipate because the DNA is where it needs to be at either end of our original parent cell. The nuclei are going to reform one associated with each cellular pole. And the process of cytokinesis is going to divide the cell, ultimately pinch the cell into two entire cells. This is telophase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. That's the process of mitosis.